What is up? Welcome back to the channel and in today's video we're going to be checking out the final round of the Virtual Drift Championship. Now heading into this round uh, we were leading the championship and uh, I was very very excited heading into it. We're going to my home race circuit of Mandela Park, a track layout that I have competed in and have finished on the podium in the real life before, albeit on a slightly different layout. But uh, yeah, super excited to be heading to my home circuit. Uh, based in Ireland, it was one of those events that it was the one that I wanted to win the championship on and to also win the events. Now, spoiler alert, we ended up winning the championship at this event and so that set us off with uh, a great announcement in that I am the 2021 Virtual Tour Championship champion. So uh, yeah, awesome uh, feat. I'm really happy actually, it was a super tough year and uh, I think uh, I'm the only driver to actually win the championship uh, or VDC Championship uh, twice. So uh, really nice record to have and I'm looking forward to next season already. So without further ado, let's head straight into qualifying and then we'll <laughs> we escalate all of the controversies that we had to deal with along the way. So yeah, let's see how we did. Uh, this replay run, we've already done a first run. We got an 85.3. I mean, you mon made a monumental mistake leaving the uh, the circuit, uh, hit the wall. So hitting it this first run, we do a massive flick initiation. Getting into the inner clipping point of two. Transitioning through here, full gas all the way out towards clipping point three. Maximizing the zone. Transition to four. Out to the wall super early onto the long wall of five. Running the wall, wing out over the wall. Lots of angle. Power through this final uh, transition here onto clipping point uh, six. Through the inner, inner point of seven and across the line with pretty decent actual angle actually. Um, point eight so a really really good strong run that ended up, ended up getting us a 94.5 i do believe and it was the run that got us first place in qualifying overall and allowed us to pull another seven points gap over tikon poleski who was second in the championship at the time he uh, qualified uh, i believe was at seventh or something like that so he unfortunately didn't get any qualifying points so it gave us a bit more of a breathing room heading into the battles so for top 32, we end up going against uh, Tobias uh, Tormundsen. Uh, Tobias, I think I, I don't know if he's qualified for VDC before. I believe he has. So, but this is his E46 BMW, and we leave a massive gap on initiation. Uh, this car is quite quick, and you don't want to sleep on it on the line. So uh, we had a pretty decent advantage. Tobias doesn't really attack until this uh, clip point five here onto the wall. So uh, he left a massive gap in initiation, obviously leaving um, because, of, because of the fact of, uh, you know, sleeping on a start line perhaps. Bit of a big backwards entry from Tobias in the chase position. You don't want to do that. And across the line, a uh, pretty same lead run that it didn't qualify, which is important. Um, but obviously Tobias' uh, chase run not really attacking until the very end. And, you know, it's a bit late to be attacking that far. You really want to be attacking from the get-go to have kind of any hope when someone has a, a super strong lead run at times. So switching to the chase position here for myself, we're chasing in Tobias. I don't really need to do anything crazy here, but Tobias does cut the inner white line there. Not allowed to do that. Um, goes out to cut clip three pretty nicely. Pretty decent lead run up until clip point five here. And I'm just mimicking, just chasing, doing what I need to do to kind of get the win here. I don't need to do anything crazy. And so following him here into the final uh, outside zone, or second to last outside zone, into the final inner and across the line. Again, just, you know, confirming, putting the full stop on it, making sure that we get that win, doing what we need to do uh, to get the battle and, uh, yeah, move on into the top 16. So, of course, it wouldn't be an Alan Hines a recap video if it wasn't for some crazy battle and you know uh, I suppose controversy or just crazy battles in general so for top 16 we end up going against Stephen Hatcher who is an ex virtual championship champion um, Stephen's a great driver super aggressive I think I think it would be fair to say that Stephen's the type of guy that would qualify first and then crash into the wall in battles and score zero twice he's that kind of all-out guy will always do 100% and doesn't really know how to let off the gas pedal. Super exciting driving style. And when you're going against Steven, you're either going to get two types of Steven. You're either going to get the Steven that's amazing and that'll be super hard to beat, or the Steven that crashes into you or crashes off into the track or spins or something small, small and silly like that. So I wasn't sure what Steven I was going to get. Uh, by the looks of it, I end up getting both Stevens <laughs> during this battle. So here we go, initiating in big angle again. I have a bit of an understeer here, so run wide on this inner clipping point two. Uh, Steven transitions here behind me aggressively um, through the clipping point three, out to four. We transition into five, and a bit of contact there from Steven. He hits me like three times, 
uh, really upsets my line and upsets my angle. We transition here into the final uh, wall or second to the last wall clip. Another tap from Steven again, a bit of a wobble from him in the chase position and across the line. So here we go, changing positions, this time to Steven uh, to lead us in for this lead run. We're a flick in behind. I wasn't sure again what Steven was going to get, so I did a pretty solid chase doing what I think I needed to do. And I think in reality, I should have pushed a bit harder. I thought the contact from Steven was a tad too much in my opinion. And I felt that by just doing a fairly clean chase and just matching everything that he does would be enough to get the win. Unfortunately, I think the judges felt that the aggression from Steven was uh, worthy enough of the kind of upsets that he was causing to me. Uh, I don't know if I kind of agree with that. I think potentially did enough there. I think the only thing I did wrong was run wide in the lead position and his chase just was, in my opinion, a little bit too aggressive, kind of upsetting my line and my angle, which I think was a little unfair. Personally, I'm the type of driver that prefers to get as close as possible without upsetting the lead driver. And uh, I don't know, uh, I think maybe the judges prefer that little bit more aggressive driving style from Steven. And I, I kind of respect that, I suppose, but pref preferably I'm the type of guy that prefers to go as clean as possible, as close as possible, uh, without really kind of causing too much harm to the lead driver. So because of that, we end up going one more time. And uh, yeah, this is where things get a little spicy. Uh, I think we were super lucky. Again, we initiate in to the inner clip point of two, a little bit wide again, this time a bit tighter. Steven really brings the heat though this time. He's really pushing us hard throughout this course. True clip point four, out to five here. Again, super early in the wall from us in the lead position. But Steven sucks up nicely onto our door. But mind you guys, we are opening up ourselves here. We're running the widest line. We're running as much angle as possible and giving Steven the best lead run that we possibly could. Exactly the same or fairly close to what we were doing in qualifying. Switching positions and here we go leading in. Again, I wasn't the most confident in this situation, guys. Uh, a bit of a tap for me on initiation. We transition here through the first transition. Steven gets out nicely out to clip point three. Hangs a bit late there, I feel. It hangs, hangs a bit late there as well, but doesn't isn't as deep on the wall as what I thought he was going to be. And I dropped back because I was expecting to be wider and, and slower, I suppose. And we transition here into the final outside zone or second to last outside zone. Steven hits the wall here across the line and forces me to actually hit him, which I think ultimately at that point, Steven probably had won the battle. I think he had done enough to get the win. But that contact on the final wall um, really upset uh, his lead line and forced me to actually hit him. And so I think that was the deciding factor of going one more time again. Um, I, I could see where the judge is coming from. When you make a mistake like that and you and you know the lead driver taps the wall and upsets the chase driver, I don't think you should really gain an advantage or you should maintain your advantage. You're going to have to do something. You know, you upset the lead, the chase driver before you cross the finish line. And I think that's how the judges view this. And uh, yeah, I kind of respect that one. I was kind of grateful for it too that they actually seen it and they kind of viewed it the same kind of mentality because I feel like that it could have gone either way in that situation. And yeah, happy to go one more time again with Steven. So here we go again for the last one more time of our battle. This time we leave the start line. I go through the chicane, Steven is chasing us in. And this is the other Steven that I'm very aware of. And unfortunately, Steven just takes us out. Uh, we do a flick initiation like we were doing all day. And Steven kind of initiates, tries to initiate side by side and just completely mistimes it. And so because of that, he just hit us in the front wheel, which was of course his mistake and sends us off into the kitty litter. So uh, unfortunately, Steven did lose that, uh, get a zero for that run because he sent me off the track. And all we had to do in our chase position here was just do a consistent chase. I actually made a setup change for this, um, for this particular battle. I made a quick little setup change. I wasn't happy with the car. And so I wanted to test that out with Steven. That's why we kind of pushed somewhat because I wanted to make sure that my setup change worked. And unfortunately, Steven hits the wall again, um, making, forcing me to hit him again. And uh, yeah, I definitely felt the car felt much better in this you know, this particular run right here. And so going forward, I did feel a lot more confident moving on. So for our top eight battle, we end up going against Adriel Machado from Brazil. Now, Adriel has a YouTube uh, channel with over 100,000 100, subscribers, and he has a very loyal fan base uh, from the Brazilians. And so heading into this battle, again, I was completely aware that I needed to win this to have the best chance of winning this championship. Uh, because we qualified first, it meant that we had our battles before Tikhan Poleski, who was second in the championship at the time, or, or, or who finished second in the championship. And so 
um, he was watching on. I knew the pressure was on Tikan to make sure that he ended up, he had to win the event to be able to get, have any hope of overtaking us in this championship. So um, I knew the, the pressure was on me to make sure I did my job, do the best as I possibly could. And so heading into this run, I wanted to do the best lead run I possibly could uh, to ensure we had the best hopes. And so again, initiating in, Nicely on to clipping point two as you transition here out to clipping point three, fulfilling the zones. Uh, Adriel's chase right here not the cleanest. He's not really matching angle. Uh, he's uh, cutting line. Uh, he matches angle right here, so he does improve quite a bit here. He does a late transition here behind us, and again not really matching angle. Cuts the inner clipping point there quite badly. And our lead run for the most part is pretty spot on, same as our qualifying. Now. Swap, swapping positions, uh, Adriel here does a very weak initiation, um, so I had to adapt to that, it was quite difficult. As we transition here, uh, again late transition from Adriel, we go into this uh, diesel zone here, going into 5, and there was massive contact. And if we uh, go back and have a look at that again quickly, um, we can see that Adriel's transition was very slow. Uh, he was braking during the transition, which you are not allowed to do. You have to uh, decel after your transition. And uh, ultimately, he he just he looked very slow. He didn't look confident. He didn't look uh, like as if it was a good scoring lead run. And that's what the judges wanted. The judges wanted the most chaseable lead run due to the angle he had during that transition, due to the speed he had during that transition, and the amount of diesel he had during that transition, um, they deemed Adriel at fault for that collision um, and allowing myself, uh, giving myself the win and moving on into the top four. Now, for this particular moment, or for this particular battle, I will go into more detail um, uh, of this battle at the end of this video because I do have a lot more points that I want to make and to clarify because I'm sure it was a big moment for for sure in the ending of the championship uh, but also for the uh, I suppose the the stream who were watching so um, there's a timestamp in the description below and if you wanted to skip to that final part of this video so top four time up against Roman Katastrenka from Belarus um, yeah so this is a uh, uh, Roman, I've battled him actually quite a few times in racing uh, BY, which at the time had a virtual series, and Roman was other as another real life drifter, a uh, pro drifter from Belarus, um, and I think he might be competing in the Russian Drift Series this year. I'm not sure about that, but either way, uh, yeah, battling Roman. This is his best result all year in his BMW M2. As we flick it in here, he flicks in nicely with us, matching us, shoot in a clipping point of two. A nice transition here behind. He's super aggressive. Uh, yeah, Roman is a great chase driver and he's a very aggressive driver. And uh, yeah, we're just doing the best lead run we possibly could, same as we did in qualifying. Roman is right there with us. Maybe a little shallow on angle, not matching angle for angle, but really doing a great job doing what he needs to do to push us. He actually hits us on, uh, on, on the inner clipping point there, pushing us wide and across the finish line uh, for a pretty decent battle. Switching positions here, um, Roman runs 270 degree steering and so his transitions are very big angle that can be hard to chase sometimes. So because of that I had to time the transitions quite well and make sure I wasn't going to make any mistakes. So I prioritized matching angle and, doing, and following his line as best as I could. Uh, so going through this outer zone 5 here, again matching angle, you could see the difference between what he did versus what I did. Quick transition from Roman again, making use of that 270 degree steering. He understeers here at the inner clipping point and unfortunately uh, because of that, that was enough to allow us to move on into the finals and battle for the first place overall. Final battle was I suppose the dream battle for Team Prototype Academy. We were on the home race circuit. Um, uh, for myself and actually Product Academy. Product Academy is an Irish based or uh, was an Irish based company. And uh, Reese Tatterson, finally, we get to battle each other. And uh, Reese probably had the most difficult bracket. Uh, he had to battle through Victor Alves in the top three to get into the finals. But he also had to battle Tikan Poleski in the top eight. Um, and which, in return, because he beat Tikan, allowed myself to win the championship. So it was a great moment for both of us. We were in the TeamSpeak channel, we were shouting and screaming. I was absolutely ecstatic. I was so happy for Tikan, but also that we managed to secure not only first place in the championship, but also third place in the championship as well for Reese. So this battle right here was just for fun vibes. It was a lot of fun. And that's what we kind of did here. We just tried to do the best possible battle that we could to put on the best show for the stream. And uh, as we flick it in, I get in nicely to clip point two. Reese is right there with us. He transitions lovely on the rear bumper, right onto our rear. 
Beal transitioning again back down the back straight into the outer zone of five and, uh, and <laughs> Reese here doing a fantastic job in the chase position matching angle for angle super close proximity I actually tapped the wall there which gave me a speed boost and going into the final inner clip he cuts it quite badly uh, yeah by the way that speed boost in the wall I'm not really sure the judges looked at it negatively but it is a mistake and it, I did gain an advantage from it so I believe they kind of cut it back as we swap positions, I have a weird wobble on initiation, but Reese does cut the inner clipping point of two quite badly, which forced me up onto the curb. I drop a wheel on the outside there, and I lose proximity, and I lost confidence here in the transition. I kind of took it easy, and I should have pushed in there a lot harder, and I didn't really attack until the end of that zone. As we transition here through into the final clipping point, I don't cut the inner clipping point like what Reese did in his, but he does still pull a gap for me across the finish line and ultimately Reese getting the win and finishing first place overall which was a great one two for the team and uh yeah a great result for us on Mandela Park and also uh well I suppose the championship standings in general with myself for finishing first overall and Reese finishing third overall so uh, a great end of the season for us and Team Product Academy so guys that's going to end it for today's video I hope you guys did enjoy it uh, as always, put down in the comment section below what you think of this event and uh, let me know what you kind of thought of that top 8 battle. It was definitely a controversial one. This event was super lucky for us and I was very fortunate that uh, we did a great, great lead run and that allowed us to move on. Um, of course, it doesn't always go this way and we had a great season this year. So uh, yeah, it's great to be 2021 champion, uh, but obviously uh, having to do videos like this is a pain. And it does really take the kind of excitement and the, I suppose, the fun out of it when you kind of, you know, uh, kind of have these situations. So um, anyway, that's going to end it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to you guys very soon. Cheers and goodbye.